1,000 miles of range and 40 miles added back per day purely through solar cells. Yeah, a lot of Aptera's claims sound a little bit crazy and out there because the vehicle is unlike anything else we've really ever seen before. It's not a car, it's not a motorcycle, it's technically an auto cycle, but you still drive it like a car. So in today's video, we're basically going to be addressing a lot of people's rightful skepticism around Aptera's efficiency claims. Obviously, I do not own the production car with all of the production ready parts and batteries and components, so I'm not able to do a real world range test for you, but we can compare all of the numbers we know about the Aptera to real world data from vehicles that do exist, like my personal Model 3 rear wheel drive, which is honestly the most efficient vehicle you can buy with NAX that's currently still available. And the Aptera is supposed to be using less than half the energy consumption of my Model 3. Pretty bold claim, roughly the equivalent of 300 miles per gallon, which has really never been possible through a highway capable vehicle before. But thanks to weight savings, a smaller frontal area, less rolling resistance, more efficient powertrain, and a far more aerodynamic shape, the Aptera should make all of these things possible, hypothetically speaking, of course. We're not doing real world range testing in today's video, it's all about the math. So it should be noted that most people are interested in range when it comes to road tripping, you know, highway speed. It doesn't really make much sense to talk about range and efficiency when you're just driving around town in the city. We all know that EVs get even better range when you drive them slower, so that's not really a big deal. We want to talk about the EPA estimated range, which accounts for about 55 to 60 percent of driving at highway speeds. And the Model 3, at least according to the EPA, real world range is always going to be different because you got different temperatures and wind and elevation changes, but at least according to the EPA's test cycle, the Model 3 rear wheel drive, my car, is able to get about 270 miles of range with a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack. That roughly translates to a miles per kilowatt hour of 4.6, which is honestly really good. It's pretty rare though for my Model 3 to genuinely get that, but we're not talking about that kind of range difference today. Aptera is claiming their vehicles with the same EPA test cycle can get 400 miles of range with a 46 or 45 kilowatt hour battery pack. That's estimating roughly 10 miles per kilowatt hour. Another way of framing it is the Aptera is saying that they can get 40 miles of range back from the sun by collecting four kilowatt hours worth of solar throughout a day and translating four kilowatt hours into 40 miles. Once again, 10 miles per kilowatt hour. And at highway speeds, your arrow, your drag on the vehicle is actually your biggest loss leader. That's what most of your energy is being spent on, simply moving air out of the way. And that's why a lot of companies will go an extra mile to refine and tweak their design just to improve the aerodynamics a little bit because it can make a substantial difference. And the Aptera is the exact opposite of a slight aerodynamic change. It's pretty much the most aerodynamic vehicle anybody's ever seen, right? Based on simulation data and aerodynamic analysis, they're targeting a drag coefficient of 0.13. And a drag coefficient is not a objective, you know, linear scale, okay? So like Tesla showcased when they unveiled the Semi that it has a lower drag coefficient than a Bugatti, but that does not mean that the Tesla Semi displaces less air than the Bugatti. The coefficient is purely speaking to the overall shape of the vehicle, the texture of the vehicle, and that kind of thing, not so much the size of the vehicle. So if we want to figure out the total drag number of the Aptera, we have to multiply the coefficient of drag by its frontal area. And to try to keep things realistic and practical, I'm going to be comparing that number with the Model 3 rear wheel drive, which we know is possible on a good sunny day if you're not driving too fast on the freeway to get 4.6 miles per kilowatt hour. I've done it in the past, so don't say it's impossible. It's just not necessarily the most common thing. But first off, we have to figure out the frontal area of the Model 3 and times that by the coefficient of drag. So the frontal area can be calculated by measuring the width of the Model 3 by the height. So it's about 82 inches wide and a little over 56 inches tall. But of course, there's still some space because the Model 3 is not a perfect rectangle. So I came up with this rough graph of how if it was in a perfect rectangle, how much of that rectangle would be occupied by the frontal area of the Model 3 and how much would just kind of be empty space around the vehicle. And with that two-tone image, you put it into a color image analyzer, you'll discover that the Model 3 occupies about 80% of that rectangle. So 80% of the width times the height roughly equals about 32.36 square feet. So pretty small aerodynamic profile. By the way, this is part of the reason the Model 3 is still much more efficient than the Model Y, even though they look very similar. Drag coefficients are pretty similar. The Model Y still has a larger frontal area that results in consuming more energy. 
energy per mile. And then coming to the Aptera, it is a bit wider than the Model 3 because of those wheel pants sitting at about 87.6 inches, but then it's just a tad shorter than the Model 3 at 56 inches tall. So we put the frontal shape of the Aptera in that exact same rectangle, a rectangle that would be 87 inches wide, 56 inches tall. Throw this image into a color image analyzer, and I'm gonna round up a little bit to give the Model 3 a tad advantage, factor in for a little bit of margin of error. And I'll say that color image analyzer says that this occupies about 62% of the rectangle, which is the width times the height. 62% of that rectangle square footage would be a little bit over 21 square feet. So if we multiply the Model 3's frontal area by its coefficient of drag, which is 0.219, we get a total drag number of about 5.66. Do the same thing with the Aptera with its lower coefficient of drag of 0.13, thanks to its very, very tapered design. Covered wheel pants having exposed wheels do have quite a bit of an aerodynamic penalty, and it's much more limber, skinny, fuselage-esque design, and you get a total drag number of about 2.745. So, if we compare the total drag numbers of the Model 3 versus the Aptera, you'll discover the Aptera has a total drag number less than half of that of the Model 3. So again, aerodynamics are the number one energy loss when you're at highway speeds, and at least according to my rough math, again, I'm no engineer, I'm not doing simulation data, I'm just kind of presenting the numbers here. The Aptera should have less than half the amount of aerodynamic penalty than the Model 3 does, and that's your biggest loss leader, so at least already just with the aerodynamic comparisons, it feels like the Aptera should be quite a bit more efficient using less than half the energy the Model 3 does per mile, but that's not the whole story, because that's assuming that rolling resistance and the energy of the motors would be identical between these two vehicles, and I don't think they really are. There's not a lot of similarities between the powertrain and the tires on these two vehicles, so we should acknowledge the Model 3 weighs about 4,000 pounds with four wheels, 18-inch tires, and they're pretty wide because EVs are heavy vehicles, so for stability reasons and efficiency reasons, you want to make sure that those tires are pretty wide, whereas the Aptera only has three wheels, which does mean there's less rolling resistance overall, not purely because there's less wheels, but also because the Aptera is far lighter. Technically, they said the launch edition is about 1,800 pounds. I'm going to round up a little bit and just assume the Aptera is about 2,000 pounds. And if that 2,000 pounds was distributed among three wheels, you get a little under 700 pounds being applied to each tire. Whereas with the Model 3, even with four wheels, you still have about 1,000 pounds of load on each wheel. And that doesn't even mention the thinness of the Aptera tire. Because it's a 2,000 pound vehicle, it doesn't need tires as wide or as big as the Model 3 does. And again, that's just assuming we're only comparing to the 18 inch wheels on the Model 3 because that's the most efficient one. Aptera has smaller tires at about 16 inches that are narrower and because of its lighter overall weight that means less rolling resistance overall than the Model 3. Should be by a pretty substantial margin but this is all speculative so I'm not going to get too much more specific than that but we can get a lot more objective with the motors. So my Model 3 rear-wheel drive just has one motor in the back of course that's 207 kilowatts peak and with the Aptera even assuming it's all-wheel drive okay and the front wheel drive models are probably going to be even more efficient, but Aptera has already told us the launch edition will be the all-wheel drive variant, but they're in-hub motors, which means they're applying the torque directly to the wheel instead of to an axle that turns the back wheels like it does on the Model 3, and collectively this all-wheel drive system still maxes out at about 150 kilowatts, which means each motor is about 50 kilowatts, which implies even in the worst case scenarios of you flooring these things and using as much power out of the motors as you can, the Aptera physically is incapable of using more energy than the single motor can in the Model 3 rear-wheel drive. And we don't know exactly what the, you know, idling, cruising energy consumption is of the Aptera all-wheel drive system because, of course, we don't have the real-world production units yet. However, because there's less rolling resistance, like we talked about, and there's only three wheels to roll around on the ground instead of four, and there are thinner tires that are smaller, and there's less wind resistance, as we established with the differences in aerodynamics between the two, meaning that it's fairly likely that the powertrain system, because the torque is being applied directly at the wheel, should be more efficient than the centrally axle-mounted motor in the Model 3 rear-wheel drive. All of this to say that even if the coefficient of drag of the Aptera is a little bit inaccurate, you know, the frontal area is a little bit easier to calculate because we do know the production grade dimensions, we know the height, we know the width. Other people have come up with the same kind of frontal areas that I have of about 21 to 22 feet. But let's assume the coefficient of drag is too generous because we are basing that on simulation data and Aptera's own claims that it is 
three, even if we round up a little bit and assume it's a 0.14 or 0.15 coefficient of drag, then the substantially smaller rolling resistance and powertrain efficiency of the Aptera should result in an EPA test cycle, allowing it to get pretty close to 10 miles per kilowatt hour. I'm not assuming that any of Aptera's range estimates, just like all of Tesla's range estimates, are extremely accurate because real world data is always different. You know, I pretty rarely get the EPA estimated range on my Model 3, but I get relatively close. And I think similarly with the Aptera, even if they don't get 10 miles per kilowatt hour in their real world range tests, if they just happen to get eight and let's say they're 20% off the range estimates, that's still really, really good. No one else on the market is close to getting eight miles per kilowatt hour. And on the launch edition, that would apply you're getting way over 300 miles of range with a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack, okay? And Model 3s that everybody's cross shopping them with, like, oh, the Aptera is too close in price to the entry Model 3. Yeah, that Model 3 at highway range is getting like 220, 230, whereas the Aptera probably in a lot of those same real world uses, we'd be looking at more like 340 or maybe 350, depending on elevation gain and temperature outside and that kind of thing. So the numbers Aptera is talking about are not crazy. Again, they're all hypothetical because we don't have the production models to test yet, but they're assembling their PI builds within the next couple of months. So I'm very excited to see the data they discover that will also include crash testing for safety calibration and all that kind of thing. But as far as getting the Aptera to get 10 miles per kilowatt hour on an EPA test cycle, it doesn't sound that crazy to me based on everything we know about aerodynamics and rolling resistance. So before you run out and say, oh, their efficiency numbers are crazy or they're relying on some kind of magic alien technology that doesn't exist. No, I think Aptera's done their homework. They've got a lot of great engineers working there that know exactly how you make a vehicle more efficient and that's how they're able to achieve their insanely good range and their meaningful solar power, which wouldn't really make a big difference on most other vehicles. But if it's a hyper efficient one like Aptera, yeah, solar on the car and being able to self power actually starts to make sense, which is part of the reason I'm so pumped and excited for Aptera. I can't stop talking about them and I want them to succeed more than anybody else because if Rivian dies, there's other electric pickup trucks we can choose from. If Lucid dies, there will be other electric sedans on the market. If Canoe dies, there will be other electric vans. And if Fisker Ocean dies, there will still be other electric SUVs to choose from. But if Aptera dies, there's no solar car. They're the only company that is legitimately trying to make this happen, and there's a lot of demand for it. That's why they have over 46,000 paid reservations, and I'm sure that number will continue to grow, especially once deliveries begin. But what do you guys think? Tell me where I'm wrong, because I'm no engineer. I'm not trying to say all of my math is perfect, but if there's measurements or things that I'm not taking into account in this video, that's good, because I'm trying to learn a lot through this process and understand how to make vehicles more efficient. That's the whole reason we're going electric and the first place is for that endless pursuit of efficiency. So please educate me in the comments down below in all the ways I'm wrong. And thank you to everybody supporting this channel directly. It seriously helps us out a ton, as does just watching this video. So thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.